Hi. Welcome back, bitches. How are ya? Hey. Hey. Hey, girl. Something I'd like to address. We had a really bad week last week. We had a really, really, really bad week. Like, Me, everything. I had such a terrible week. So welcome to our therapy session. <laughs> Hey. Um, if you guys aren't watching on YouTube, Caitlin is fully, fully laying down, like absolute chill mode. Yeah, this couch is just so unbearably this couch sucks. comfortable. We need to get a new one. And we might, yeah, we might have to get a new one because I really. What if we get bean bags? Oh, that could be cute. Yeah, I actually think I like that. Little cozy bean bags. Um. I yeah. No. So yeah, we just had a terrible week last yeah. week. I don't even think we spoke all last week. You and I definitely didn't speak. No, it was just. I barely Not spoke to anyone. It. I chose to come in here instead of our actual break room all week. Yeah, I did notice that. I, that I did not want to speak to anyone. And if someone came in here, I would go sit outside. Damn. Like, I was, like, really in my own head for real. Mm-hmm. Everything went wrong for me last week. Yeah, it was a tough week. Mine was just work stuff. Yeah. And we're back. We're back. We're getting there. I wouldn't say we're fully back. No. But we're getting there. I, You know what? I do feel fully back. Yeah, no, I'm feeling better. I feel free and i feel light that kind of week that i had last week i think is a good way to go into what we want to talk about today which is the dark side of the hair industry it's not all sunshine and rainbows over here guys i know that we talk a lot about how much we love what we do Mm -hmm. and how amazing like our clients are and how amazing our team environment is but Mm -hmm. It is not perfect, and we definitely have some really shitty experiences as well. Yeah. Yeah, this, yeah, I don't even know where to start. I think we should go ahead and, like, preface this episode with, like, we're not going to hold back in this episode. This is for the hair bitches, for real. Yeah, we're just going to be real, and, like, if If, it's... If you're an easily sensitive person and you're not, like, actively doing hair... Maybe just don't even listen. But if you're open, then you should. This is like a vent sesh. Yeah, it's, it's a vent not, sesh. It's not for, like, if you're a client and this might offend you, but not because we're wanting to offend you. Yeah. It's just because we're talking about our side of things. Yeah. Or, I don't know, just nobody get offended. And if you do, fine, get offended. But maybe don't hate us for it because yeah. we're really just we're people we're yeah we're venting we're people and (laughs) we're just talking about the shitty side of the hair industry and every profession everything has a shitty industry everything yeah Yeah. has a shitty side yeah nothing's perfect 100 percent of the time yeah so we want to shed some light on that yeah and it is what it is it is what it is it is what it is hey it is what it is um god i don't even know where to start i feel like i personally can talk about the dark side of the hair industry because Mm -hmm. as a salon owner i think i experience it a lot Mm -hmm. um just because i have to deal with uh, everyone's bad every unhappy client yeah yeah every or like every stylist like when they're having a bad day like it's my bad like so i feel like i carry a lot of it even you like you have experienced like some shitty parts already of the hair industry and Um, like i definitely witnessed not necessarily on a personal level i mean sometimes but I witnessed a lot when I was on front desk um, as well, like with like texts coming in and like the things, the way that people communicate things, the scenes that people can make over seemingly nothing, the dramatics of it all. I didn't realize how crazy bitches were. I'm sorry. I hate to say it. I hope it don't sound ridiculous. I did not (laughs) realize. I did not realize how crazy people could get. And holy shit, like people can get absolutely insane I I think one of my worst experiences, I, it wasn't even when I was doing hair. It was when someone that was my friend oh God. came into the salon, texted me like a week later saying that she like didn't like it or something. And then we got her in, which is what we typically do when there's like a an unsatisfied client and it's like a pretty like relatively easy fix. Like we'll get them in on the house and like make them happy Mm -hmm. and then she went behind my back and wrote a one-star review on the salon and said that her stylist was gaslighting her which she wasn't 
she told her that the reason her hair didn't lift was because she came in with such greasy hair. And that was true. And she really had the audacity to write a review after we got her in. But, but, but she didn't say, you're in it because of your greasy hair. It was like, you have built up on yeah, your hair. And there's yeah, so much. yeah. <laughs> like, she didn't word it. She didn't word it that way. She worded it in a much more professional way. But that was one of the most, like, ugly things. Like, I still, I still struggle. Like, that girl has reached out to me a few times to, like, get a coffee or something. And I still struggle to, like, even answer because I'm, like, the that's my career you know like yes i was like just front desk at the time but i had already had plans to be doing hair here like and everyone knew that at this point and i was like and you're gonna write a one-star review about the place that i work at the place that like my business is also affected by your review Mm -hmm. like that's so shady it's so ugly and also we got you in to make you happy yeah, it was just ugly because we were being so nice. We were being so accommodating. She came in. She was late as fuck for her revision. Late as fuck. It was a Thursday night. And we still, like, accommodated her. It was just crazy. It was literally just crazy. Like, it, it's the people you know, too. Like, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. That's crazy to me. Yeah, that was that was crazy. I have like 500 of those stories mm-hmm. just because people love leaving bad reviews <laughs> and they just I've gotten to the point where I'm just like whatever. Like if you're going to leave a bad review, that's on you. Like yeah. if that makes you sleep better at night, then it's not going to make fun. you get a refund. Yeah, it's <laughs> not, yeah, no. I'm I'm yeah. I Where do I even I'm like I don't even know where to start with like all my Okay. Shitty story. I'll ask you questions then. Okay. And you can just yeah, answer I'm them. Just like, I can just. What forward. was probably, what would you say is the like most absurd reaction that you've ever seen out of someone who was unhappy? One time when I was in my studio before I even opened the salon, I had such a bad migraine this is like before I even like started getting my fucking mm-hmm. daily headaches. It was just I just had like a random morning. I woke up with such a bad migraine, and I started my day at one that day. And I was like all morning. I was like, oh my god. I was like trying to sleep. I was trying to drink water, stay in a dark room, and I was like really trying to push through. And it was like eleven o'clock in the morning, and I was like, I'm gonna have to text my client. Like, there's mm-hmm. no way I can stand for hours doing hair and my head is like throbbing mm-hmm. and i feel like i'm gonna puke like it was so bad and it was a new client and it's usually with new clients yeah. i have never yeah. had a bad experience with a current client if they're unhappy with something like it's a very like let's talk about let's it kind talk of situation. about it but it's always the new clients who like don't know your intentions that get the most pissed off oh yeah but i just i sent her a long text and i was like listen i am so sorry i know this is last minute like i I get it if you're like upset, that's fine. But I have a migraine. I can't like there's no way I can do your hair today. I remember I was like, I'll get you in. I think I wasn't coming that Sunday or Monday. Like yeah. I like I felt bad. Like I I knew it was last minute. I know people like are getting their hair done because they have, have life. things, yeah. Um and she was so nasty about it and that was the first time I had a client be really nasty about me not feeling well and not being able to do mm. hair. Um, and she, I just remember her sending me such a long text, like, like disgusting, like the way she was talking to me. And I just didn't answer. Cause I was like, fuck. Like, yeah. Like I'm not going to accommodate Yeah. I'm now. not going <laughs> to, yeah. Now I'm not going to come in on my day off yeah. to get you in. And also I'm not even going to like try to justify it because I don't feel good point blank period. Yeah. That's the hardest part about being, I think in a service industry, mm-hmm. I was actually talking about this with my client the other day, who's a psychiatrist. She was like, mm-hmm. it's so hard to take off when you're not feeling well because people are relying on you Mm -hmm. but in the same breath like sometimes it just happens Mm -hmm. and it's just shitty luck for the person on the other end totally um so that was a bad experience that's like crazy i i feel like i saw that a lot on front desk as well would like yeah just people get someone like i understand the inconvenience like the hence apologizing for the inconvenience you know Mm -hmm. like we understand that it's an inconvenience it's an inconvenience to us well yeah because now we have to work 10 times harder to like get you in yeah like, we don't want to take off no. last minute that no. sucks yeah people who get i don't get someone like genuinely getting angry over like you waking up sick or unwell and 
taking it upon yourself to like recognize that you're not going to be qualified to do their hair that day like why would you be mad at me i would feel bad if i had someone even if it was like i don't know i had a party to go to Mm -hmm. like i would even feel because it's just like people are human that actually happened with your client the other day when you were literally puking every five minutes oh my god and i had to text her it was your one o'clock and i text her at like 11 the kind of same thing Mm -hmm. and it was so last minute because you were trying to push through. I was trying so hard. You, God, you I guys, was Courtney was throwing so up. Like, I'm not, I've never seen someone throw up in my life. Like, you were actually dying that day. I and literally, anytime, it was like every, like, 20 minutes, I would get so overheated you, and, like, just, falling yeah. over. And you stepped away from your client so many times. So many times. Like, cause it just, like, but that day, I texted your client. I was, and again, it was a new client. Like, it's just shitty. Mm-hmm for everyone Mm -hmm. and i was just like we're so sorry i offered her like a huge discount i was like i'm so sorry it's so last minute but like i'm just being honest with you like your stylist is like ill Ill. like she does not feel well and she was like are you kidding me i'm i've been waiting for this appointment for so long valid i get it be upset like it is annoying like i would be annoyed but like don't text and do you, like, like try to you like make people to, feel like shit yeah like do you want me to do your hair while yeah, i'm like, like literally also, throwing like, up and if you had a virus like who knows what you have but, like right. that could could have been contagious like why would you want to come in and like i'm very closely interacting with you yeah so i would say that like the taking off when you're sick is mm-hmm. a dark side of the hair uh-huh. industry or whatever because it's, it's so bad yeah it's just so and i always oh, feel so yeah. guilty too like i literally I was in the bathroom that day, like, on the ground, hovering in front of the toilet, texting everyone, like, can you please check on my girl? Can you Mm -hmm. please check on my girl? Because I didn't want her to feel, like, neglected. Like, I literally had to walk away mid-foil three times, and I felt so fucking bad. Like, I literally felt so horrible. Like, I hate not being able to engage with my client, and, like, I hate – I didn't want her to feel – luckily, she's already been here twice, but, like, I didn't want her to feel, you know, like, I hate that her experience – what did you end up telling mm-hmm. her yeah at the end like i'd finished like all of her color i didn't want to tell her like while i was actively doing her color and like freak her out yeah, like yeah, i yeah. knew it was gonna look fine like yeah. i wouldn't i wouldn't have like just been lousy because i didn't feel well like i was gonna i was gonna get it done but mm-hmm. i there was no way i was gonna be able to stand for that blow dry like she didn't even have a lot of hair but like i Thank like god there was just ayana. no way i know ayana's such a little angel thank she always god saves for ayana yeah. but i like picked her up at the shampoo bowl and i was like hey like i'm so sorry that i've been stepping away so much like my stomach is really agitated about something today i don't know but i'm gonna have like ayana our assistant like do your blow dry i'm gonna come over and make sure like you feel good about it before you head Mm -hmm. out but i do feel really bad i'm sorry that i've had to step away so much and she was like oh it's okay like i worked an overnight shift last night like i'm tired anyway like Mm -hmm. so it was like it was good like i was lucky yeah that she was like an understanding person but like it could have definitely gone other ways like Mm -hmm. i think about like that that client that i had my one my one nightmare since i started working here like if that had been her and i was ill like that like there would be no excuse there would be no remorse there would be no sympathy to the fact that like i'm like communicating that Mm -hmm. i'm unwell and that's why i can't be as involved on your hair like as i want to be like i'm still going to make sure that you leave with good hair regardless Mm -hmm. it's my job and no one in the salon would let you leave with busted hair like everyone knows that i'm dying yeah but like yeah i was grateful that she she was chill i felt so bad i felt so bad canceling the one o'clock too i mean the only reason i didn't even cancel that morning client was because i was actively here Mm -hmm. like i was actively here and like before i didn't even know you were feeling like you didn't even tell me i didn't want to I thought it was, like, PMS nausea. Yeah. Like, initially, like, I woke up in the morning and, like, immediately, like, Kelly called me and I was, like, I have to go. I think I'm going to throw up. And I, like, (laughs) got up and threw up and then walked downstairs to feed the cat, threw up again. Threw up again before I left for work. So weird. I was, like, windows down the whole way here and then I got here and, like, was just in and out of the bathroom. Margo was, like, your client's here. And I'm, like, okay, go to the bathroom again. Come back. I'm, like, trying to get a hold. Yeah, and then you start feeling dehydrated. Yeah. But so, yeah, that and then I just have so many shitty moments. Honestly, your client that uh, you you're like first and only that like, really upsets angry me. client. Yeah, she was. Uh, I mean, it, it's like such a long story, but like 
we were just trying to make her happy but while also like telling her just everything and then like midway she's like i have to be out or in the beginning no literally like as i'm foiling her first of all okay let's she, just say the story because okay. i feel like now we're all over the place okay so she sits down she's showing me her inspo photos she has like natural level like two hair right She's had one. So session. natural level two for anyone who doesn't do hair is like almost it's basically it's black. black. It's like one shade lighter than black. Yeah. Like like yeah. The darkest that a natural hair color can be. Yeah. Um yeah, so that's her like natural color. And she's had like one session of blonding. I think it was like four months prior. And it was looking like faded eights. Like eights eights, nines maybe that have had like hard water kind of thing. Like just very like dull. And then eight nine is I I don't think it was it was not nine I would say it was seven eight okay yeah so it was like a very like a lot of orangey undertones yeah, yeah. like that you know that blonde that's like orangey blonde mm-hmm. that's the, mm-hmm. that's where her hair was at yeah so and we're so we're dealing with almost black on yeah. the top and then orangey uh huh okay and her inspo photos are the brightest blonde you could possibly be mm-hmm. the base of the inspo photo is like a natural blonde kind of thing like this the the inspo photo itself the client is like naturally blonde and then it's just like the brightest blonde for the dimensional pieces and i'm like okay like i'll do my best to get you there like as close to this as we can like it's going to look a little bit different because your natural base is darker um and she's like well i'm not spending hundreds of dollars unless i leave blonde and like right off the bat i'm like i understand that like i understand you know she's like my last stylist said that i would only need one more session and i was like well I've never done your hair before, so I'll let you know, like, how it's lifting as I'm moving through. And um, she then tells me she had a keratin treatment. No, no, You go through the consultation. Yeah. You walk away. Yeah. Right? And yes. then you come back. So, and then th- she mentioned that. Yeah. Okay. I, I just want to clarify Yeah. That. She mentioned the keratin treatment after, like, I was literally going to grab the cape. Mm-hmm. Like, I was like, okay, here's your quote for today. I'll do the best I can. My same, like, typical spiel with a new client. Like, I've never done your hair. We'll see, Mm -hmm. you know, what we can accomplish today. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm like, and I don't have you down for a cut. That's that's an important point. She's like, no, no cut. Yeah, she did not want to cut from from the start. We tried. We said your hair, like, if you're wanting to go this light, your ends are going to feel dry. You need a cut. Yes. All of this communicated. Yeah. I've learned to over communicate yes, even yes. if it annoys them. Mm-hmm. So I walk away, grab the cape, come back. And she's like, I did have a keratin treatment or like a, she said a smoothing treatment in Morocco. And I was like, okay, was it like a keratin treatment? She was like, it was a protein treatment. I was like, so keratin. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, okay, well honestly, that being said, I want to do a test strand first because hair can be really sensitive. Um, there can be a lot of chemical reactions with keratin treatments and lightener. So I just want to make sure that, like, the integrity of your hair is going to be safe while I'm going through enlightening so I can kind of figure out, like, what to lighten your hair with. And she's like, well, I'm on a time crunch. And I'm like, I mean, I am, too. I have a 130. So, mm-hmm. like, we're going to make this work. Like, I, mm-hmm. you know. And she's like, I need to be out by one. And I'm like, well, I have you blocked off until 130 regardless. Like, even without the keratin treatment and the test strand aside, I would probably still need until 130. So when she got the confirmation text, she saw that she it, the appointment blocked was off. booked from 930 to 130. Yes. So if there's any time constraints, we need to know about that beforehand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. So that's just another point. And it's for her bridal be. shower, mind you. She had her bridal shower that day that she was that's what she was getting her hair done for. Mm-hmm. Her wedding was the next day. <laughs> her wedding was literally the next day um and i'm like okay well i'm gonna get this test strand going so that we know like whatever we're on the same team i like reiterate with her like we both want the same thing but like i do need to make sure that your hair is going to be healthy i don't want to go through foil your whole head open it and it'll be melted off so we're going to do this test strand. i'm going to get this going we'll see what we work with test strand was sensitive i did one on her natural hair and one on the previously lightened hair previously lightened hair was sensitive natural hair was also a little bit sensitive but nothing unmanageable so we did caitlin foiled the back and i foiled the front because we were on a time crunch and i was telling her i'm going to do the best that i can she was already like are you going to be able to get me where i want are you going to be able to get me like let's just do a style then and we're like we're not going to downgrade your ticket to a style when we have you down for a full foil. like that's money out of my pocket as well Mm -hmm. like no you're going to do the foils today I was already cautious. I was already hesitant. But we did literally like the lowest developer on her ends and I think 20 and on through, her natural. And through this, remember, 
she didn't want a haircut mm-hmm. and her haircut was i'm sorry it, it was, was jacked, jacked. so let's just her shortest layer was so short keep already in mind. uh-huh we were both boiling in that head we both saw what her hair was like beforehand mm-hmm I had every single person in the salon hopping on this girl's hair at one point or another to try to be respectful of her time, mm-hmm. which hindsight, I'm never doing that again. I will never be busting my ass for someone else's time constraint ever again. I just won't mm-hmm. like I, I will be aware of their time constraint and I will tell them this is what we can accomplish in this time. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to bend my back for I'm not going to yeah. break my back for you anymore. Yeah, I agree. Um, But alas, you live and learn. I had everyone in that salon hopping on checking foils while I was still like I was still foiling I had people coming on to wipe off foils resaturate some foils put heat on some foils pull like I mean there was every everyone's hands was in there at one point or another I run to the back to like chug water and I have someone resaturating your foils while I'm out there like putting heat on them trying to get her out on the right time it was a whole fiasco and her hair was you know, super dark, lifting very slow. And I just wanted, I was just praying that I could just get her to fucking nines. Like, I was like, she will feel blonde if I can get her to nines. Like, she will feel bright if I can get her to nines. Doing everything in my fucking power. I told her, like, we have, we have a choice to make. Like, I can either get you to your color goal or you'll get the style you want. Like, I, I'm getting to that point now. Like, I'm either going to have to pull them at a darker level than what you want or you will leave with a blow dry. It's like, it's one or the other if this is your time constraint i'm trying to be respectful of your time she's like well the color is more important to me than the style and i'm like okay then we're gonna we're gonna stick through and we're gonna get this color going we were rough drying her hair because i mean she wears a hijab anyway so she was leaving with her hijab on regardless so it's like i guess this like the style isn't the most important thing so i'm right here like smoothing the front ayana's rough drying the back like i'm like smoothing like one side of her head blow drying it i show her the front piece like the whole front quadrant and i'm like how do you feel about this tone how do you feel about placement in my opinion it was beautiful yeah so it was very beautiful she looked at it and was like i love it she literally looked at me and said she loved it. She was having the time of her life. She thought it was so blonde. Just felt so good. The fucking switch goes out because Ayana and I's blow dryers were plugged into the same wall. So I'm like, Ayana, move her over to this station. Keep blow drying. I'm going to run to the back and see if I can get this shit fixed. I come back and Ayana ha- like wasn't with her. Like she was like assisting someone else that day. So like she was mm-hmm. like with the person she was assisting. And this girl is in the mirror holding up her hair and pulling it like literally pulling it so hard yeah. like if i were to do that on my hair right now my hair well would you just out. don't pull on you don't pull freshly blonde hair no. that's just been lightened it's obviously sensitive obviously and, and when i told it's her wet, like you don't do that she knew that it was going to be sensitive as well yeah. but it, and when we say sensitive it's not like her hair it was wasn't like, melting no there was, was no just, melted it was whatsoever just fragile as yes. any hair is after there was no service. like extreme elasticity like it was it was fine it was mm-hmm. just dry it was dry and her blow dry wasn't complete yet and she's sitting here looking and she's like my hair is coming out (laughs) she looks at me like so concerned and i'm like okay well that wasn't happening at the bowl and she's like no this is ridiculous do you see how short this is and i was like you already had those layers um i was like but you know let me go uh, i'll grab some hair oil but we're not done with the blow dry like whatever at this point we're already running 30 minutes past Mm -hmm. when she needed to be out so i'm like are you really making a scene right now like Mm -hmm. i'm trying to get you out Mm mm-hmm I immediately go over and like I knew I, I, I didn't even have any further conversation with this woman because I knew it was not going to be worth my battle. I went up to Kate. I was like, I need you to talk to this girl like uh, she's already making a scene. And Kate, I'll let you take over. I mean, and I hate when this happens because I know everyone in the salon is just like they can feel the energy. and they Everyone gets quiet. Mm-hmm. So like you just hear the entire conversation. I'm like, great. Like, fuck mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. Um, So I go over and she's again pulling on her hair. And I was like, OK let's stop pulling on your hair because uh that's not helping and she was like complaining about just like it feeling dry and we're like yes but remember we told you you needed a haircut or else your hair was going to feel dry just kind of like reverting back to the consultation and like what we went over but people like to just pretend like the consultation didn't happen and so that's what she was kind of doing so we're going in circles and she's just like complaining about what else was she like she was like you as a professional should know she said that it was going to be sensitive. She said that sh- you like you shouldn't have done this. Like, and I'm sitting here like, I no. I said that we needed to be cautious with how we were lightening her hair, and that's what we did. Mm-hmm. And so I think we just ended it with, like, feel it out, 
and see where you're at. Um, and then if you're still not happy, like shoot us a text because at the end of the day, we want them happy. Like, of course, not, like trying to be a bitch, but like we're also trying to be realistic. Yeah. And we're trying to stand our ground because if it's something that we already went over in the consultations mm -hmm. and you're just going to act like you didn't hear it, mm -hmm. that's not on us. Like mm -hmm. if we told you you needed a haircut or your hair is going to feel dry and you decided in that moment that you did not want to listen to our professional judgment then that's on you if your hair then feels dry after be mad at yourself for not getting the haircut because we already yeah. tried talking to you about it yeah um whatever she leaves she checks out where we ended it with we're on the same team here we both want you happy with yes. your hair right so you obviously have to go there's nothing else we can do at this point because you literally have to go um shoot us a text in the next couple of days feel it out live in it see how you do and we'll touch base and then that's it she starts blowing up the salon phone as soon as she leaves saying that she needs to talk to me and she was just so nasty to me on the phone i honestly don't even know how i had her back in but i was I don't just know trying to be I, I don't know it's just it's so hard to like figure out the line with mm -hmm. good customer service and standing up for yourself and i was really struggling with her in that moment like trying to find the balance yeah oh yeah so yeah i was having a hard time figuring out like the the line the the balance between good customer service and like also standing up for myself because it's just so it yeah it gets a little tricky so she was just being so nasty to me saying that i was gaslighting her when really i was just telling her the facts and she didn't want to like she just didn't want to hear it um that really offended me. Yeah. She told me that I was greedy and I was selfish. And I was like, if I was greedy and selfish, I would literally hang up the phone on you, block you, keep your money and let you be unhappy. Mm -hmm. But I'm on the phone with you trying to figure out what we can do to get you happy while also keeping in mind the conversation and consultation that we had prior to all of this happening. Right. So she was just nasty on the phone with me. I, I literally told her, I was like, I'm going to hang up if you continue to talk to me like this mm -hmm. because right now you're being disrespectful and I'm being respectful to you. So if we're not going to like match each other's mm -hmm. energy here, then this conversation just needs to end. Um, and then she kind of switched a little bit. And then she came in. I did her hair. She was so happy. Yeah, and also I would like to add that the inspo photo that she showed you when yeah. she came in was literally what was on her fucking head. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it looked very similar. And I'll be the first person to, like, call out any anyone here and be like, yeah, no, that doesn't look right. It was so beautiful. But, again, I was just trying to put my customer service hat in that moment. And um, whatever, she ended happy and, like, crisis averted. She's but, never going to enter my chair again, I promise but, you that. Yeah, and, and so that was just, like, such a tough situation because – you're dealing with one, you didn't make someone happy. Two, the embarrassment of them like speaking causing a loudly scene. and causing a scene. And in one of my of repeat clients was literally sitting right in the waiting room, waiting for me to be ready for her, mm -hmm. hearing all of this go down. Mm -hmm. Like, this is one of my like OG clients. Yeah. And you're trying to make a fool of me. And yes. she's right here. Yeah. So you're like, you're dealing with that aspect. And then, then dealing with like the belittling on the phone and like getting called like names like such as greedy or like gaslighting which is mm -hmm. like for me upsetting because i i'm like that's not why i have a salon is to like make people feel good so like when someone's right. telling me like i'm the opposite it, you know it hurts my feelings um so yeah you're just dealing with all that it's just such whenever there's an unhappy client it's just such a negative feeling it all sucks. around and it sucks when the client is just nasty about it mm -hmm. Like, I just don't, I don't get why it's so hard to be nice. Yeah. It's not like your hair was on the floor mounted. It's not. Literally not at all. Like, Everyone there's a time was and a diligently place to be checking mean. her. There's a, or mean, but like. You can be frustrated as a client. You have every right to be frustrated. You have every right to be unhappy with the results of your hair. You have every right to do that. How you communicate that is so important. Being disrespectful is inexcusable. Like, yeah. especially, especially considering that she saw us all busting our asses for her. And she heard me reiterate time and time again, I am trying to be respectful of your time, but this is happening on your hair. Showing her foils, showing her what I'm working with, 
telling her it's not moving any further than this. I'm going to give it five more. I'm going to put heat on it for five more, you know, like, Mm -hmm. but I don't want your hair to be sensitive. So I'm going to have to pull like, there's no, there's literally nothing more I can do. I was professional the entire time. Everyone in the salon was diligent with her, respectful of her and for her to turn around and cause a scene like that and disrespect you, disrespect me, disrespect the entire salon was just beyond me like it was literally beyond me like we were accommodating you and continue to accommodate you after the fact as well and like this is what we got there's just so much disrespect in the hair industry towards stylists i know i said this in another episode like women are so mean to women but it's so true like that shit doesn't happen in a barber shop Mm -hmm. that shit doesn't happen like in a doctor's office Mm -hmm. like you there's a way to talk to someone like they're a human like if Mm -hmm. you're not happy be a big girl and be like hey i'm not happy blah blah blah. what are the solutions instead of being like yeah what the fuck like that i want my money back you're you're come on we're all big girls here we don't we don't have to react like that it's so unnecessary it's so so disgusting like and grow up well also like that's not how you're gonna get helped i'm sorry anyone any of the bad reviews that we have are from people who d- who disrespected me or Silas here mm-hmm. that I will not entertain mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. That is the only time we get bad reviews mm-hmm. is when someone crosses that line with me where I'm like, you know what? Fuck that. Mm-hmm. I'm not helping you. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Not going to do it. If I'm being nice to you and you're like treating me like absolute garbage, you think I'm going to want to accommodate you? No. No. And I have no problem accommodating anyone. If you just say, hey, Literally. I'm not happy, I'll be like, Okay, think first of all, thank you for telling me. Uh-huh. I know that's hard. Uh-huh. Second, here's a solution. Mm-hmm. When can you come back in? We're human. Shit happens. We're not going to get it right all the time. Yeah. That's yeah. it. It's such an easy thing, but when you start to get nasty and let emotions take over you, like n- Like no. my first client who was like not happy with the result because of like banding that happened so she left darker. She DM'd you and she DM'd me and she was very very polite yeah. she was very polite she was just like i'm not super happy with this like here is why i no disrespect courtney was amazing she's an amazing stylist i still trust her i still want her to make the the changes i still want her to be my stylist like she was super respectful and then she even sat down in my chair when she came in and she was like i'm so sorry like I, and i was like don't be sorry you're allowed like you're allowed allowed to to vocalize Yeah, you're allowed to not like your hair it's just the way that you go about it yes and i'm not talking about because i already know people are going to be like well we're paying money and we need to like our hair that's fine you're paying money that's why you're getting like that satisfaction guarantee that we're wanting you to come back in that's why we're trying to get you back in. and it's also like when people complain here it's not that they're complaining about like a botched haircut where it's no. like this no. okay if you leave and your hair's uneven as fuck obviously like of course be angry like that's fucked up if someone let you leave like that if someone let you leave with layers that look like staircases yes be mad yes. but like when it's something that like was talked about then there's no reason for it there's nothing that's why like being so unbearably thorough in a consultation that's the first thing that i learned from this salon that i have carried through with all and like i have clients who are like get visibly annoyed with how many questions i ask them and i don't care I, i'll literally be like i'm sorry girl i have to ask a million questions so that we can be on the same page and we can have the same vision and we can talk through what you're like what's going to be reasonable for your hair today like we have to go through it because i need that insurance down the line when everyone can hold witness to the fact that i told you I cannot promise that I'm going to get you here. I cannot promise that this is like this is going to happen today. I can't promise it's going to happen next session. It may take a few. Like that's why yeah, being thorough is so good so people are on the same page. Why we're also a text-based salon because I like mm-hmm. to have everything in writing. Right. Yep. I like to see everything beforehand and that way we have a paper trail of why mm-hmm. like why you're getting the answers that you're getting mm-hmm. and you can't go back and say it never happened. Mm-hmm. Shout out Adrian Dara for Shout literally out. introducing tech space to me and I think the hair industry because I can't even imagine like booking something over the phone and like I, having no idea what you're actually booking. Yeah. So because there are also people who are like, I haven't colored my hair, but you can see in the photo that there's like a line of like and that previous helps. color. Yeah. And that's like important because then we can like tentatively prepare timing, quote, everything for like that possibility of that banding being previous color from 
a long time ago Mm -hmm. so yeah i don't know i think if if you're thorough like you have you almost like have a leg to stand on Mm -hmm. when things go wrong Mm -hmm. so uh the customer service side of it of the hair industry can be really defeating Mm -hmm. depleting Mm -hmm. um anxiety filled it's that's the hardest part of being a hairstylist it's i mean she she really ruined my whole day yeah that one client like she and, really and, ruined and my you'll whole learn day. for it not to because yeah. i used to have such a hard time whenever someone would leave a bad review or like reach out like it would like my heart would sink mm-hmm. right away and i still care now when that happens but i'm just not gonna let it like mm-hmm. affect me like that because it's just it's gonna happen and like i'm just more gracious with myself now where i'm like you know what it i've been what it under is. promising like fuck yeah. since that client I really have. Like, I've been telling all my clients, like, this may not be happening today. Like, I tell them right off the bat, like, Mm -hmm. it's possible I may not be able to get you here today. And then when I do, they're, like, super happy to the roof. But, like, I'm... Yeah, just don't set yourself I don't make a single... Even with my repeat clients, I don't don't even tell them that their inspo is going to die. I'm like, I'll do the best that I can to get you here today. Like, even with people that I've seen a million times. Um, yeah. And I, I think, like, another dark side of the hair industry is because i have client stories forever i mean we could say we can do a whole episode mm-hmm. on just that because i literally mm-hmm. can write a book on it um but also i think comparison <laughs> jealousy oh my god in the hair industry is mm-hmm. real everyone mm-hmm. experiences it but it's it's how you choose to act on it that mm-hmm. makes all the difference um i've i've got stories for that i've got stylists here who deal with with that i think we all do deal with like imposter syndrome Mm. and just like the never-ending comparing yourself to other stylists especially now when social media is so hot instagram for hair is like is everything Mm -hmm. and it's so easy to feel like you're not doing enough Mm -hmm. and i think it's easy to get in in like a a dark space with that Mm -hmm. i mean i i know stylists here struggle with it Mm -hmm. i know i have to where i'm like i'm not doing enough and you're always comparing yourself to someone else and it's just such a bad yeah such a bad cycle to be in i don't know i think social so media hard. is great i love it so much it's i've learned so much from it i've yeah it's so great but there's yeah. also like the the bad in it and i think the comparison and even the jealousy like if you see someone else like doing really good mm. then you feel like damn like i'm not doing enough mm-hmm. kind of thing mm-hmm. um yeah i feel like um judgment as well like I don't know. I find myself, this is something that I, and I think, you know, I think any professional that is using social media as like a part of their platform for like their business um, probably experiences this as well. Like it's not exclusive to hair, but like, I don't want to feel like I have to hide who I am on my like social media based on like how clients may perceive (coughs) me, you know, like I am a very like body positive empowerment like that is that is like part of my like branding as a stylist I feel you know like I think a lot of people take away um more than just their hair when they leave my chair and like I like that to be reflective in my social media as well and like I don't want to be like oh let me not say this cuss word on my story because I don't want you know Karen to freak out that I didn't quote a bible verse on my story today okay. you know like the that aspect of it I feel like I struggle with a lot because i try to find that line of like are people going to perceive this as unprofessional if i'm like telling them like you're a badass and like you're doing great you know it's like Mm -hmm. that line which you know my clientele personally that i feel like i attract would never perceive that as unprofessional but i also am aware that it's not just like my clients aren't always my choice you know like new clients are booked that are they could be totally totally different from me and think that everything that I do is demonic and gross, mm-hmm. you know? So it's mm-hmm. like, it's such a fine line for me to figure out, like, how to be authentic on my platform and, like, you know, prepare clients for who they're going to be dealing with. And Because I refuse to be anything I'm not. Like, I'll be a, a different energy of myself, but I refuse to say anything that I don't believe and, you know, anything like that. So it's always hard for me to balance that with social media for sure. Mm, yeah i felt that before i still do i think for the longest on social media i was very like hair only hair only mm-hmm. and i didn't want to like curse or like 
whatever and then i just started posting more like i wouldn't say like personal things but i just let people in a little bit Mm -hmm. more and the response has been great but you know i know there's so many people who probably can't stand me that like hate follow me Mm -hmm. probably like it uh, there's gonna be Mm -hmm. people who do that and it's just like being okay with like that's not my kind of people and just being okay with knowing that i'm not for everyone yeah yeah and i I don't know i struggled with that too but now i feel like i'm just like whatever Mm -hmm. you follow me because you you like me Mm -hmm. and if you follow me because you don't like me that's on you yeah all you gotta do is unfollow me you know yeah um but yeah Social media comes with, like, weird... It does. It's a weird territory. It is. Uh, It's a great one, too, though. I love it. I love it so much, but it definitely, like I said, can be, um, like, a place where you get burnt out, too. Because it's it's like being a hairstylist. It's You can't just do hair. It's like you have to do social media to, Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, showcase your work and that can lead to burnout yeah like you can get burnout from doing hair and it's not from even doing hair it's just like being so like yeah in that hair world all the time and like you know clients who don't know anything about hair how could they you know they see like a reel on instagram of a hair transformation that maybe that salon is comfortable with doing eight hour sessions with a client and that's what they're paying for as well like it was probably like a couple grand Mm -hmm. of an appointment and a full day Mm -hmm. of an appointment we don't do that at our salon and so when they're like well this was achieved in one session like well that was an eight hour session Mm -hmm. i have you in for four Mm -hmm. that was a two thousand dollar session i have you down for 400 Mm -hmm. you know like Mm -hmm. that kind of thing there are social media can set unreasonable expectations for clients as well and it's hard to like make that clear to some clients like i i think they they'll understand but i think at the end of the day they can't possibly know because they don't do hair so they see it and they're like well this this guy got it done Mm -hmm. like what do you mean you can't do this today Mm -hmm. you know yeah yeah social media is a little crazy Mm -hmm. i'm trying to think of like some other um like i keep saying dark side of the hair industry like there's another way to say that yeah um Um, I wrote down, um, mm, like, hair school a little bit. Oh, my God. I feel oh my like God. hair school, well, you have a different take on it, but I'm just saying, like, hair school can be so clicky um, and so intimidating at times that I feel like that can kind of make people not love doing hair mm-hmm. or just starting out mm-hmm. or in your instance just a shitty hair school just a horrible i mean borderline prison like straight up like borderline prison <sighs> at least at prison they get outdoor time like my experience with hair school was sinister wait don't say too much because i feel like we should do a whole episode on that like our okay. hair school experience okay. yeah well To give um, a summary, basically, without getting too into it, if you're at a hair school that changes the rules every other day and punishes you for things that they didn't care about yesterday um, and hits you with surprise fines and constant unprofessionalism, get the fuck out of there. Run! run (laughs) go no it's so bad and like it really hair school had my mental health at my worst like i don't think i i will i think forever in my life forever i don't think there will ever be a year that i was less happy i was the least happy i've ever been in my entire fucking life in hair school yeah the entire the entire time even when i switched schools and it was better it was miserable it just sucks you're working for free you're working for free and when you do it well yeah it makes it worse yeah so hair school is a a bad part of the it's all a scam too like honestly well school in general is a scam unless you're going to they don't even really teach you anything like i did i learned everything here that's how it is i think in any career though like i really don't think college is necessary unless you're going to be a scientist an engineer a doctor like something so yeah technical like where if like shit goes wrong like it could be detrimental but or like a lawyer but i think like 
you don't need to go to school to be a teacher. Like no. that's something you can get trained on and like I could have shadowed you for six months and not gone to college school at all and been yeah. doing probably even better work than I do like, right don't you need to go to school for you don't need to go to school for uh marketing like you can learn like it's just, yeah all that can be trained yeah but anyway yeah i'm like rambling but yeah school can be um a waste of time like, if you're in cosmetology <laughs> school just keep your head up yeah don't let <laughs> don't listen to those bitches who are still living in high school or middle school who are like I can do a balayage, but for you, mm-hmm. like, okay, like, get off your fucking high horse. We're all in hair school. Like, when I think another like hard part of hair school that can make it so dark. Ugh, I hate saying that, but I think because everyone's in a different level. Mm-hmm. You have people who get it immediately, who get it immediately. They've been working at a salon, they understand it. You have people who've never worked a day in their life in the salon who love doing hair, but like they're struggling a little bit mm-hmm. more. Like, there's so many. There's people who don't know anything about hair at all, period. Don't even know how to do their own hair. Yeah. And they're, like, just in hair school because, like, it was, like, accessible to them. Mm -hmm. So there's so many different phases in hair school that I feel like that could easily Mm -hmm. um, put someone in. mean girls. Yeah. Wow, yeah, I got a lot of hair school stories, too, so can't wait to talk about. We'll do a full episode on hair school. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Um what else wait i'm like trying to think what else uh like for the dark side i would just say this will be like my last point but um drama in a salon Mm. yikes (laughs) (laughs) um yeah we don't we don't have drama did you hear that no okay my throat did a weird noise um we don't have drama we definitely get annoyed with each other which is like anywhere else like if you're around yeah. someone too long i get annoyed with casey because i live with him yeah and he gets annoyed with me like yeah whatever but i'm talking about like drama where like you have like a bad apple in the salon mm-hmm. that can really mm-hmm. fucking rot the entire place mm-hmm. salon owners because i actually just had this conversation with a salon owner who reached out to me if you have one person in your salon just one who is creating drama, who is starting shit, who's always saying negative stuff, who is just a constant source of negativity, they gotta go. You gotta cut them off. Like, it doesn't matter if they make a lot of money for your salon or if you're scared to, like, be in that income deficit for a little bit. You gotta let go of that person Mm -hmm. because I'm telling you, one bad person will just rot everyone else start putting bad shit in their head Mm -hmm. there's just no need to have any kind of like source of drama in your salon so find the source Mm -hmm. cut them let them go Mm -hmm. and you will be so relieved so just you'll feel like a weight has been taken off of your shoulders once you get rid of that person and you see how positive an actual healthy Mm -hmm. salon environment can be Mm -hmm. so i would say that's a pretty uh dark side of the hair industry definitely hashtag dark side of the hair industry hashtag get away from the dark side please it's not fun um but there's way more light that overcomes all the dark parts and it's normal and we all go through it and i think just find um a hair friend that can relate to you Mm -hmm. because it it feels so much better to have someone that can relate to you yes. that makes it feel not so dark. Yes. You know, you don't want to be by yourself dealing with angry clients that will take a toll on your mental health. Yes. It's so good to talk it out with someone. And then I'm like, oh, okay, like I'm not alone. Maybe it's not me. So, and also it's like, if you observe like a pattern of your clientele behaving a certain way, like, you know, it's, Working in a commission salon makes this a little bit more challenging, probably, but, like, we've still done it. But, like, don't be afraid to fire clients that are just straight up disrespectful. Like, I'm confident that if I were to come up to you and tell you, like, me and this client are never going to be a good fit. Like, they are disrespectful to me every time. They are... Oh, yeah. Like, you know, like, it would immediately, like, without question, like, not be an issue for me to fire them. Like... Yeah, yeah, and the way that we go about it is, like, is it just a personality thing, Mm -hmm. or is it the client is Mm -hmm. 
not like the vibe for the salon because there's so many other stylists they can try out. yeah i'm like yeah we've done that before. they'll probably vibe with someone else in the salon yeah. but just not me kind yeah. of thing mm-hmm. yeah so yeah god yeah i can go on forever. forever about hashtag the dark side of the hair industry yeah that shit's hard so but i hope that sheds some light you're not alone every we all go through it even though we're probably posting mostly the positive i try to post like bad shit that happens in the yeah. salon just so people can know that like see i feel like i i don't share as much of that because i'm like afraid honestly of like people perceiving me as like not a good stylist mm-hmm. yeah like i don't want people to know that like i've had an unhappy client before yeah you know it's like that's embarrassing to me even yeah. though it wasn't a me thing at all no i get that because yeah. you don't want someone to like base their judgment off of you off yeah. that one experience but yeah. I, I think it just makes it more relatable. Like, I yeah. I was so afraid for so long to, like, post about a bad review, mm-hmm. like, w- talking about it. Because I didn't want people to go read it and then form their own opinions. Mm-hmm. But it's, like, a little freeing to just share that. And then also, like, you'll have people who are, like, oh, my God, no, like, you're not crazy. Yeah. I don't know. It's yeah, it's kind of nice. But I, I, true. I, I see that. That's true. I, I think as a baby stylist, I just feel a lot of, like, pressure for... Which I don't really, I mean, like, my books are doing good. Like, I don't need to be, like, stressing about, like, scrapping for clients right now, I feel. But, like... No, I get that, though. I do want, like, potentially new clients to not come into it thinking that, like, oh, like, she made this person unhappy and she's talking about it on Instagram. Wait, but also let me just say this, too. For you, I think it's different. Not only because you're, like, a newer stylist, but also your Instagram is catered to clients. clients. My Instagram is catered to yes. hairstylists, so now I feel more comfortable. Since the doing pod that. started, I've gotten more stylist followers, mm-hmm. but majority is still like clients, potential clients, old friends. Because you're who, still like, growing, keep up. yeah, you're yeah. still growing that. But I think so. I can see why that would mm-hmm. be not like the best thing to talk about. I'll just talk about it like on my Snapchat story. Yeah, or on the podcast. On the podcast, yeah. This what is it the place? Sister. Yeah. yeah, but um, wow. Well, well, despite all of the possible negativity, the good outweighs. Love what I do. Mm -hmm. Love my clients. Ninety nine point nine percent of the time. Um, I'm getting married in two weeks. (laughs) But yeah, I'm gonna be married, bitches. (laughs) Watch out. I'm gonna be up in that wedding like. Where are my single bitches at? You know? <laughs> You're the only one. <laughs> yeah, no, literally. I'm scared. Who am I going to make out with? Guys, I've made out with someone at every single one of the girls' weddings, bachelorettes. Like, I've always had my little, like, make out something. Courtney, I literally don't think there's a single man. <gasps> what? How? I'm always around all of these loving relationships. <laughs> and i'm just guilty i must <laughs> i must uh, be unlovable no you're not <laughs> you're not i don't know how someone hasn't snatched you up beats me um if miguel does hair and wants to you know <laughs> hey shooting her shot who's hey yo is he single i don't know hey miguel. i don't really know anything about him but look good at catch him. over here she likes your face he is the most beautiful man I've ever seen. Oh, my God. He's literally in my recently searched. Like, I'd be stalking him all the time. Ugh. Does he have a ring on his finger? No, I don't think so. Mm. Like, he's so handsome. It's unbearable. Oh, my God. Okay, we're going to post this on TikTok. Everyone tag Miguel. <laughs> Hi, Miguel. This hey, is Miguel. Courtney. Hey. She's your future girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> But if you have a girlfriend, I'm so sorry. We respect or her. Or a boyfriend. Or a boyfriend. We respect them so we much. We respect And we're them. so sorry. We just didn't know. And we respect your preferences. I just have a crush on you. No. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, follow us on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Bitches in the Break Room. Yep. Kate um, McAvan Hair for me on Insta. Courtney Cab Hair. And... Yeah, give us a five-star rating if you're listening on Spotify. Smash that five-star button. Smash that, bitch. Love you. Love you guys so much. Bye.